Hello and welcome to Out of the Box, the podcast where we talk music, film and all things pop culture. Today we will be talking about starting your own business within the creative industry. So, let's talk about our business first. Yeah, ma'am. So, obviously our business, Matchbox Productions, business formed in what, October 2020? Yeah. Perfect timing because I think the day we furnished the studio was the day we locked down. It was so indeed. perfect timing. So the, the business is based around it's based around music, isn't it? Really, I think that was our starting point. That was our main focus: music, artists, bands. And then over the two years, which we've been running now, this is we're going into our third year now. We are, you know, we've we've worked with more corporate stuff, a lot more video stuff. But the core of the business was always always focused around always music, music wasn't it? And and, and, the, and the creative industry. Saying that, what do you think has been for you, like the hardest thing about starting your own business in the creative industry? I think the cr- the hardest part of really was at the very start. We actually started during lockdown, so obviously working with the in the, within the creative sector during a lockdown wasn't the most ideal situation to be in because obviously yeah. loads of things got shut down, bands couldn't go out and gig, um, different things like that. Like we weren't out, be, we weren't able to go out and and shoot like music videos with people because there was like all this distance in Palava going on. But at the same time, like. The whole gigging thing, not pe- bands not being able to gig, kind of worked in our favour, didn't it? Really. So I think I think the whole sort of industry found a way to keep going. You know, by the time we got to October, that's like second lockdown. It wasn't as bad. The rules weren't as strict and stuff, and we were able to operate in like a you know skeleton setup and stuff. Mm-hmm. And you take the precautions. And I remember we had to do you know sessions where just drums and bass would come, and then the next day vocals and guitar would come to make sure we were following all the rules and stuff so yeah I, I'd spraying people with disinfectants yeah. as they come in and leave scanning the <laughs> QR code at the front yeah. door I, I, I do think that was a challenge and but, but we overcame it which was, which was the good thing it's sort of that's the important thing is how you overcome it really mm. so yeah what about you mate what what would you say was your hardest thing from sort of a video perspective as well as, as starting and starting the business I think one thing that I don't necessarily it was like a difficult thing it's just something that we had to get over and learn quickly was actually nothing to do with what the business was about. So like it was a music business, it was a videography business. The first half of that sentence was easy because you know music, you know producing, yeah. I know video. I think the something that we had to get over quickly was business. Yeah, definitely. It's a business. Um, so starting our own business was fine with what we had to do and working with people, but we had to learn how to run a business. That meant money wages rent wi-fi electric tax tax (laughs) all those things we've just sort of had to pick up that you maybe don't quite realize what's involved with running a business even even registering a business and things like that like knowing what to register yourself as like we we had a couple of discussions at the start whether to whether we were going to register as like a limited company or a partnership or things like that and it's just the the sort of nitty gritty of the business side of things that's sometimes like overlooked when you think oh I'm a musician I think I can start a music business it's like it's, do you know what I mean there was loads there's loads of help out there and stuff and there's loads of ways to do it but sort of finding our route to like like company's house and it was quite overwhelming especially at first obviously like you said you register the business because you can't get a unit without being registered mm-hmm. but do you register to your home address but you can't register here because there's just this whole sort of cycle of loops you had to go through like it's so it's so official it was real yeah once we moved into this place it became a real business it wasn't just you know something that we did on people that we worked with it became a real business yeah because prior to moving into the studio we we, we did work with a, a few people didn't we like out on location or whatever um but this sort of this studio really sort of made it feel like we right now now we're a real business like we are here to make money make it a livelihood make it our career and and sort of get down to it yeah because at first when we first started like you just said then it was sort of any money we made was to buy something so there was no like cash flow really Mm. whereas like moving in and you have like rent to pay for and electric to pay for and all those things and we had to learn quick yeah I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the challenge. Yeah, it's been great. Like, like Ollie said before, like there's 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 lots of help out there um, for you for any struggling sort of 
new business startups that there is plenty of, of help online and and sort of the, the the people that you can ring at like gov.co.uk are all fairly even though it takes you about eight years to get through yeah. and then through painstaking like horrendous music through all these different bloody switchboards mm. it's terrible but once you finally get through to someone they're like decent humans on the other yeah. side like they're not like the worst these. is when you call hmrc and you sit on the phone for 40 minutes and then it says press one and all these things and you get to number four and it says thank you for your call and like the, the call just ends oh mate and i've been in that position so many times because you can't <laughs> find the right path and you just get to a dead end and they just put the phone down and then you're back yeah. to square one it's in a bit yeah <laughs> Look, looking from a more you know positive outlook and stuff obviously we're starting year three now you know when you look back on those two years of starting the business what what would you say you know has been your favorite from from a business perspective or not necessarily an individual job maybe like a certain time within those two years what do you think has been your sort of you know how what have you enjoyed most about these last two years i think like like i said earlier like the moving into this studio was was a big highlight for me because it made it feel like i needed to put my big boy pants on and sort of like get down to the actual nitty gritty of, of what starting a business is and the whole fun of sort of like moving into this shell of a unit and, and even just like silly things like painting, putting everything up, like putting our desks in and stuff like that. I, I, I absolutely loved that. I think I thought it was amazing. If I had to pinpoint at one moment, there was one day and I think we were maybe like three days into moving in and we'd got the keys and we'd, you know, and um, I got here first and it was the day all the the um, construction stuff was oh, being yeah. delivered. <laughs> um, you know, the wall and the, the window and the and the pallets and the and the acoustic boards and stuff. And I had to get here early to see the guy, the, the truck pull up and stuff. And I remember sat in, I was probably sat here on like just a, the only stool we had in the studio. Yeah, the little plastic round one, dead, whatever it was. Dead echoey space, not a lick of paint on the wall. And I, I we had a kettle. And I made myself a hot chocolate and I sat in the floor here and I just waited for this truck to come and I just sat here like, it's <laughs> got to be here soon. It was like waiting for Father Christmas to come around. And it was, uh... <laughs> I mean, I've never moved into a, like my own house where you, you it's different because obviously this year, you well, last year now, you did. Yeah. And it felt like sort of a, a feeling that I get yeah. from like moving into a house. <laughs> and when, when the truck rolled up, I suppose like a little van with some pallets and it, the biggest truck I've ever <laughs> yeah, seen. It turned. Huge, it was like this huge crane on the back that... <laughs> And then he dropped our parts off and drove away, and then yeah, and then we and then we we really got started, and it came together quick. And we had a week turnaround, didn't we? To to to, to sort of, in fact, it was like five days, wasn't it? Yeah, I, th- I think in hindsight now we sort of shot ourselves in the foot because we didn't get to enjoy the move in. Yeah, because we moved in on the Friday, and and we were recording on the following Saturday, and mm. it wasn't enough time, and we rushed it. But but those early moments of like, oh, this is happening, we're doing it. I think yeah. that was really exciting. It, w- it was intense. It was it was like camping, wasn't it? Yeah, it was intense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We may as well have put a mattress in there and just stayed <laughs> over that week. But yeah, um, so moving on to uh, the next sort of topic, um, moving away from sort of us a little bit. But what would you say is the best advice to someone starting starting a business, sort of like this year now going forward? Like, what what would be your best advice given from the things you've learned from our previous years going forward for someone new? So in 2023, if I was starting a new business tomorrow, my advice would be to start now. Yeah. Start now because there's probably loads of people that are thinking, could I make this hobby into a business and could I make this into a business? And you'll never know unless you start. Yeah. And there's probably, you can make a business out of anything really. Like obviously we chose video and photo and audio and stuff. And I think that discussion we had of, oh, should we do it? Should we not? When we said, yeah, we'll do it. And then we did it that's when things started to get fun yeah. and we made things happen. But if you, you know, put it off till tomorrow, then you, you, you're never going to sort of do it. So I think that would be my biggest advice would just be to, to start, trust the process that it'll grow slow mm. and stick with it and be consistent. And then my other piece of advice would be to sort of whatever your craft is, you know, whether it's knitting, yeah, learn the business side of it as well to go along with your knitting business. Mm, Obviously, because w- what you're doing, you're obviously good at. And if you're good at it, you can turn it into a business. Yeah, I think I, I agree with that. Like, I think you should just go and do it. Like, you, you'll, you'll learn a lot. And sometimes you might not always make the right decisions. Like, that's the whole part of the process, isn't it? Sometimes you've got to make 
difficult decisions or sometimes you've got to make the wrong decision to know what is the right decision and I think for going forward for someone starting in this year I think like the best advice is to just go and do it and and don't sort of like aim high I'd say like be ambitious because you you can control your own sort of like ambition like you can't control your own success to a degree but you can control your own ambition and if you aim as high as you can or as, as ambitious, most am, ambitiously. I don't, is that a word? I've got a habit in these podcasts. <laughs> He's of, making of words up. words, haven't That's I? Right, we'll go with it. We'll go with it again. Like, um, But yeah, I think like you should just be the most ambitious version of you starting a business that you, that you possibly can because, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's advice that we probably should give ourselves because it, it is tricky in that situation where you're weighing up risks and you're weighing up the reward and stuff and sort of taking that step to taking your hobby from a hobby to a business is is a difficult decision and not something that you sort of can just take lightly and it's daunting you know the question of you leaving your full-time job yeah you know that was a big step and stuff and all those moments looking back are an easy decision to make in hindsight yeah getting the studio was a risk but looking back easy decision you leaving your job easy decision but at the time it doesn't sort of feel that way mm. and and like you said you will you will slip up we will make mistakes we've we've made our fair share in the two years but we've, we've learned from them and sort of hopefully grown from them and improved mm. um but that's just the nature of starting your own business it's, yeah definitely it's part, it's part of the fun i suppose staying with that topic what would you say like are the biggest difficulties you faced sort of within the past sort of two years we're going into year three now so what would you say the biggest difficulties are like whether it's business jobs anything really like obviously focused around sort of the, the whole business aspect. What would you say? I think one of the difficulties I faced, especially early on in the business, was sort of dealing with other people that were seeing what we were doing and wanted sort of a part of it yeah. from their own perspective. So not exactly like, I'm going to say copycats, but when we started the business and, and I think people at the time didn't realise it was a real business, maybe they saw it as a hobby and stuff, and a few other places popped up with similar things a similar yeah. sort of like you know outlook on what we were doing and thought oh maybe we could do that and stuff and at the time I think I didn't let it get to me but it played a part in where I put my energy yeah and I was worried about them instead of focusing on myself and say well whatever they do they'll do focus on ourselves and keep on growing and keep on doing what we're doing and lead them to it and and they didn't have this, some of them place didn't have the same motivation or it didn't work out as well. And because they were running off ideas that weren't their own, it didn't succeed. Whereas when we started to focus on myself again and, and ourselves again, they, I just forgot and they fell, fell by the wayside. And I think that's really important that if you do something successful or you, the, the likelihood is that people will either think they can do it as well or sort of want a part of that as well. And mm. I think that's something I struggled with at first to sort of just concentrate on myself and not worry about what was going on. Yeah. Sometimes uh, you've, got to have, like, you've got to be around, uh, aware of your surroundings and, and sort of your, your not not so much competition, but like your, like, competition. <laughs> yeah, well, well, the thing is, well... Like, it's not competition, is it? It's like, it's like-minded, like-minded creatives. Well, the that, thing is as well, like, I, when we first started, I was really enjoying meeting other people that were starting their own business, meeting other people that were doing this, people that were doing that, and it was really good to sort of share ideas and share contacts and, and whatever. I'm all for working with people in your industry and helping each other and supporting each other's businesses. That that was always top of my list because people helped me and, you know, since we've grown, I feel like I've given advice to other people and stuff, but the problem I had at the time was it wasn't sort of mutual. It was sort of they were taking from yeah, there was no give my work, yeah. so it felt it didn't feel like a natural conversation and stuff. And once I sort of concentrated on, our, on ourselves, that's when things improved. But at the time, it was hard not to get wrapped up and mm-hmm. and think, well, you know, we're competing or whatever. Or definitely, yeah. No, I agree. I think my biggest difficulty from the past two years is my, my head. You're, you're a little bit different because your your head and maybe it's just learnt behaviour. This, but. Your head works a bit more sort of analytically and if that's a word, I'm making <laughs> words up again, um, a bit more sort of like mathematical in terms of numbers and understanding certain like business aspects. Whereas me, like I'm, th- I'm very much a creative through and through where 
sometimes I, I, I find it difficult to sort of wrap my head around sort of like the, 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 the nitty gritty things that we were speaking about before, sort of like the whole tax things, numbers, percentages, things like that. Um, I'd like to say that I've, I've, I've made the effort to, to try and, to, obviously I've had to, like to try and learn that and go through it. Obviously you've, you've helped me through that a lot. And that's the, the I suppose the whole, the whole point of working in, in a partnership and, and, and as, as us as a duo. Um, but I feel like that sort of, um, took a bit of, a bit of a head scratch to, for, for me to get my head round. Yeah. That was like, I'm not saying, <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, you, dumb, you fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it it was it was a difficult situation. I feel like I probably took on that side, but the sides of the business that you, that you took on over me, like I think that's another piece of advice would just be to play to your strengths. <clears throat> There's no point in you spending five hours doing something that I could do in two because it's just more suited to me. Yeah, the same way that I'm not going to do something that's more suited to you that you could do in half the time. It's just sort of playing to the strengths and you know communicating between us. It's just the way it is and that's something that you've had to sort of get your head around, but I've been there to sort of maybe lead that side of the business, but the sides of the business that you lead that I don't have as much understanding mm -hmm. on. So it's just sort of... I think that's that's another bit of good advice, going to advice is, is um, communication. If you're starting a business with, with like a partner, um, or like a team member or, or even like a whole team of people, I think communication is key because when you get miscommunication is when you start getting problems. Um, Luckily, we've not had much miscommunication. We, we're, we're fairly good at communicating all the time. Mm. Probably because of the fact we're like an old married couple. <laughs> yeah. We're like never leave each other's side. Oh. And when we do, we're texting each other mm -hmm. about this or whatever. And we'll go on and we'll jump on PlayStation to have a bit of downtime. And we'll, <laughs> we'll end up talking about something anyway. Um, but yeah, I think communication is, is key. In, in, especially if you start in a business with someone else. So something I've really enjoyed this year that I think we've done well is sort of how we've been setting goals. And I don't mean that in this respect like, oh, okay, year one, let's make a billion pounds. <laughs> Although it would be nice. It would be nice. I mean, like we, we, we set ourselves like really small, like, you know, month goals or six weeks goals or, you know, um, yearly goals, whatever. And it's really nice to sort of, see ourselves hit those goals because they're smaller and more manageable it creates like you know we're sort of hitting those goals and it gives us encouragement to yeah. keep going and then hit the next goal definitely and, and there's the next goal <clears throat> so the worst thing you can do is set unrealistic expe expectations for yourself i think by, by saying like you want to earn a billion pound for example for argument's sake at the end of this year is is you best you're basically setting yourself up to fail aren't you like you better you better setting yourself smaller more achievable targets you then feel more accomplished when you hit them and it spurs you on to go want to do more that, that that's why if you set an unrealistic goal like you just said it has the opposite effect mm. hitting small goals that gradually grow give you the confidence whereas putting goals in front of you that are difficult to hit will disencourage you yeah 100 percent oh discourage you not disencourage you discourage <laughs> no you're right <laughs> it will discourage you year one we learned we learned a whole amount is there anything we learned from year two as we became a more established obviously in 2022 was our second year do you think anything as we became a more established business that you think we learned definitely i think the problem well not the problem because it's not a problem at all but when you're busy it's hard to it's hard to look ahead when you're in the moment sometimes so say if we've been on solid like say if we've had like a january that's been absolutely rampacked full of work sometimes it's 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 easy to forget about the other 11 months of the year and i think by when you're busy i think the best thing that you can do is is to not forget about those 11 months of the year because there's been a, not 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 often but like if there's if if we've had busy months sometimes we've had like say a quiet month the month after because we've not looked ahead enough yeah do you know yeah. what i mean it's sort of like managing the growth yeah. of the business and, and learning that if you're growing, you need to manage it. Mm. And that's 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 what you just said. If you have like a busy two months, you're growing. But if you don't manage it, month three is going to be affected because you've not sort of prepared f to keep it up, to keep consistent. And like you can only do so much at a certain pace without managing it. And I think that's probably what we've done sometimes. And I think that's probably a good point that this year be more consistent in terms of like making sure that what we're doing is is uh, sustainable yeah you know not doing too much not burning yourself out and stuff so 
For, for sure, I think I think I can definitely that's, agree with that. That's something that we've done and learnt from it, so that this year now we know that that won't happen, which is a good thing. Like like I said before, sometimes you have to make these sort of not errors, but sometimes you have to make these sort of things and do these things to know what not to do or what to do next time better or worse. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, you're not going to do things worse. But yeah, for yeah. sure. So looking at that then, do you think there's anything like a mistake you've made? I know I know, I can pinpoint a few things. That it might not be my fault exactly, but I'll take responsibility and things I've definitely learned from starting my own business. Anything that you can, you know, see that you think, I wish I'd done that differently. I think I'm pretty perfect, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I'm joking. So there's going to be mistakes that I've made like over the past couple of years. Um, but I, I don't know, really. It's a good question. Um, I think one thing was not learning the whole personal tax side of things. That's one thing that I've had to sort of play catch up on. And if you were looking at it from a business perspective, if you're getting paid from a business, obviously as directors ourselves, we have to take control of our own personal accounts. Yeah. And sometimes because I've never been in this position before, yeah. I've I've had to sort of get my head around how it works and not left it to the last minute, but definitely left it to the last minute to learn. Yeah, well, even though we're into our third year now, the business, the first eighteen months, we we didn't have to worry about money and paying yeah. ourselves because we just we just worked sort of for the business. Whereas in the last couple of years, we just, well, last year or so, we've been paying mm-hmm. ourselves another thing to sort of deal with. Yeah, so um, that that whole side of things, it's not a mistake, but it's it's definitely something that I'll do in future is be more on top. I've, I I tried to, mm. but sometimes I just let it slack, and I shouldn't have done. Yeah. I, th- I think for me, I-, I can probably pinpoint an exact moment and you'll probably know exactly what it is. It was not even that long ago. Mm. Problem with my hard drive. Lost loads of work. In bits because all this work that I've done for other people, all this work that hadn't been published yet, been finished, been okayed. Hard drive breaks and it's all lost. And yeah. it was all in one place. It was not a good few months for you. It was like, not a good... F- end of the, end of the no. year, was it? No, I, I, it, my hard drive broke. I lost all my work and it wasn't just for me or the money that might have been lost. It was the sort of the conversation that I might have had to have and mm. let people down and, and, and this and that. And obviously over the months, I you know managed to recover the data and it was all okay. Everyone got the work. No one, nothing was lost in the end. So it was a happy ending, I suppose. But one thing I learned, and this just got very... Be prepared, back up your footage, <laughs> keep yeah. everything safe. If something's important, keep it safe because now my system is like a clad tight and I'm just... so in terms of mistakes, that was like... I had, so, I had something similar to happen to me in uni um, with some of my uni work and I ended up losing like half an essay or whatever. And since that moment, that is when my sort of like pivotal point of, of backups and, and, and having like a, a sturdy hard drive has really sort of been like the forefront of my thoughts when working and it's and 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 sometimes it like it's like again it's sometimes an afterthought isn't it like when you put something on a hard drive you expect it to be safe mm. when you're paying a hundred pound for a hard drive you expect that footage to stay safe or you expect whatever you're putting on it to stay safe and it's just an unfortunate series of events that happened that it, it sort of made it go kaput <laughs> well the funny thing is is that when i was in university the night before my work was due, I was double checking and I thought before I press submit, I'm going to read it once more over and just, just double check. I'm going to triple check. <laughs> Sat there thinking, no, oh, this is great. Like ready to submit. Just plug my hard drive into the computer and press submit. Hard drive didn't come on. Nah. Night before, emailed to my lecture and said, here's where we're at. The dog ate my homework. And, yeah. <laughs> and did I learn? No. <laughs> so... <laughs> Two mistakes yeah. over the last few years, but um, but, but yeah, we we move now. At least it's it's all sorted. We're now. We're safe now. Just and, to confirm, and I've, and it's I've all sorted now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, obviously, we've talked about the businesses like uh, in general. Obviously, the money side, the sort of business aspect. In terms of your side of the business from audio, if you were to give sort of three tips now for, for from audio, what what would they sort of be? As in, it might be the actual job, the sort of business side. What, what three, three, three things that you'd say for someone starting an audio production business tomorrow? I think I'd probably say the same thing as I said before. For one of them is to just go out and do it. But I think working with as many bands as possible that you can in a variety of, of genres. Don't one 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 bit of advice that my lecturers used to give me at uni is don't sort of like 
blink yourself to your favorite genre because sometimes you'll work with say a jazz fusion band which you don't even listen to you don't even really know what is what it is sometimes you work with a band that come in through the doors like that and they'll end up being your favorite band you've ever worked with mm-hmm. do you know what i mean so don't blink yourself to specific genres although set in saying that work with a range of bands and find your calling one thing i found throughout my sort of style is big busy in your face mixes that's that's my thing like every producer will have a, a, a different thing like it doesn't mean to say that you can't do the other thing it just means to it's just that your that that's your speciality so to say it's like a, it's like a chef having a signature dish yeah. do you know what i mean yeah that is my signature dish if people yeah. don't want that big when drums, they come in big, big drums guitars. big guitars big up front big full rich mixes yeah i hate i i hate personally hearing a song and it sounding really weedy and thin it just like some sometimes it works like Arctic Monkeys, for example. Some of their earlier stuff is weedy and thin because of that whole sort of like two thousands DIY do it yourself, um, sort of like thin spangly guitar kind of vibe. But yeah, that's not my thing. Yeah, and then number three. Number three would be to. I don't know. I don't know. Pass. 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 I don't know. My biggest advice is to just go and do it, I think. Like, I feel like that is the the best advice you can do. Like, it doesn't matter if you've got, like, old equipment. It doesn't do. It doesn't matter if you've got the most up-to-date microphones. Just go and do. get what you've got mm. and practice it, whether that's picking up a guitar yourself. If you're, if, you're, if you're musically inclined, like, try recording yourself. That's how I sort of started learning as, as a bedroom producer, which the old guys, the old producers will probably hate mm. because all these bedroom producers are coming through now and, and killing off all these like old tape mm. studios and stuff like that. But I mean, that's, that's, that's a whole new kettle of fish again, isn't it? Yeah. But, but yeah, I think I, I don't, I don't really know other than, other than to just go and do it, experiment, do things wrong. Don't do things by the book. Mm. So one thing I've learned is that people can tell you how to use compression or reverb in certain positions or make sure your EQs before your compression or this and that. Yeah like just try it try not doing that yeah i saw something that was i think it was like a podcast and stuff and that that was a that was like one of the main main points was that everything's subjective and if you do something on purpose then it's not a mistake yeah so like from a photo perspective like i tend to overexpose my photos but i do it on purpose Mm -hmm. so if you don't like it it's might but like it but that's that's how i like to do it yeah like that's that's what makes every sort of creative different and that's what will make one person or one artist go and choose what a, a producer yeah. over another like yeah. so someone might look at yours and go oh it's, there's a lot of like compression and you'd be like yeah yeah i know yeah because that, that's what i chose to do yeah. oh your photos a bit overexposed yeah i know like because i want yeah that's what i like i like that's to do style. yeah 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 what about you mate what, what would you say in terms of like video photo um, if I was going to start a video and photo business tomorrow, my first point of call, similar to yours, would be to, to, to use what you have at hand. So maybe not from a business perspective, but if you just want to get into it and learn as a starting point, I'd just say use what you've got. And the thing most people have now is, is the phone. Obviously, the capabilities now on your phone. Get out, <clears> go and take photos of your dog. Mm. Go and video a family holiday. Get used to filming, get used to editing. Go on holiday with your family. Film yourself doing whatever, come home, put on your computer, yeah. edit it together and, and see, see what you get. Um, and don't be gear obsessed because yeah. it's easy to get, it is easy to get sort of brought in and want the next camera because there's, there's just an ever chasing list. You're never going to have everything you want. Nope. I can, uh, I can align myself with mm. that. <laughs> My second would be in terms of video, backlight everything. Yeah. Everything you do, backlight it because it look better. And number three would be to just overshoot. Yeah. Film more than you need, especially in like a, if you're filming a music video, if you're filming, you know, a highlights reel, you will you might get to a point you think, right, I've got enough now and the event's still going, keep going. You will never have enough. You'll get back to the computer and you'll delete 80% of it and you'll only use 20%. But if you keep filming, obviously that's going to get a bigger sort of, you know, You've got amount more, to you've choose got more variety from. to choose from, yeah. And you might end up co- coming to the end of it and shot 101 out of 102 might be like the the shot. Mm. Whereas if you'd have stopped at shot 80, then... Yeah. Well, it's like the, we, we did the marathon and stuff and you get to the finish line, you get you film a few people getting over the finish line, you think, right, I've got enough now. 
and there's times in the last one where we was like right okay maybe we want to stop and we kept filming and these you know three people come across the line and they're, they're waving a flag and it was turned out to be the best shot of the day yeah and if you stop filming you think you've got enough you, you miss moments in live things and then in controlled things like music videos and stuff overshoot get your b-roll because you never know what you're going to use and you get to the edit and think oh i wish i had that shot and sometimes if you overshoot you'll be like well i know exactly where that shot is you go and find it you put it in mm. so i'd say pick up what you've got and use it don't get gear obsessed backlight everything you do <laughs> and overshoot and don't in a, stop pressing record in a controlled uh, photo photo sort of like studio environment would you say same thing about backlight or is it slightly different or is that sort of more subjective I mean, it might be my opinion, but in photo and video, backlight everything. Yeah. Like when we do the the, the, the um, product commercials, we've always got hair light mm. hitting the back. When we do music videos, we've always got lights behind. When we do when we do anything, I, back, I just backlight everything. One thing I learned in college is that the backlight will set you out from your background as well, so and add depth. Yeah. So it, that's it, the whole purpose, right? Yeah. Yeah. Backlight everything. And it looks cool. <laughs> So I'll tell you what then, we've, we've looked at like our first year as a business and we've looked at, looked at year two. Let's forget about business for now. Talking about the year. Yeah. What, what are you looking forward to this year? 2022. 2023. Um, 20, oh, shit, yeah. 2023. 2023. 2023. Um, there's a few things really. I've got a few cool gigs that I've got coming up yeah. in, the, in the next year. Um, seeing Wallows on Wednesday. Seeing Wallows on Wednesday. I've got um, Spacey Jane coming up. Um, in February, I think, mm-hmm. um, which I'm looking forward to. Um, but in terms of like, you're going on holiday next week. Oh yeah, I'm going on holiday. Yeah, I'm going Krakow with my brother. We've he's never been a he's never really been abroad without my parents on his own. So me and him are going on a uh, little boys holiday. <laughs> yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. It'd be cool. I've never been before, so gonna go and do sort of like the the historic trips there mm-hmm. and, um, and stuff like that. But and yeah, the historical pubs, that's yeah, a the historical, historical beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All you the old Historically beers. drunk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but there's some cool films coming out this year. Yes. Have you seen the film list? I have. Yeah, some big ones. And your 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 list aligns with mine I'm looking at now. Is it, yeah? My, yeah, I'm, my biggest film this year I'm looking forward to is Spider-Man. It's always been your favourite sort of it has. film, it's hasn't my, it's, it? It's my fav- favourite superhero film. But it's not only Spider Man; it's Into the Spider Verse was I yours, know. wasn't it? And Across the Spider Verse comes. Yeah, out sorry, this year. Into the Spider Verse is my favourite superhero film superhero ever. film. It's in my top three films ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to this next one. It looks really cool. So, do you know? Do you know the cool trivia about Into the Spider Verse? No. So at the start of the film, Miles Morales is animated at less frames. Yeah. And then as the film progresses and he gets better with his powers, his frame rate matches the frame rate of the film. That's so cool. So at the start... Is that why it looks all jagged? It's all jaggedy and stuff and it's all quite like... It feels quite comic anyway, it fits. Yeah, yeah. And then as he grows into the role of Spider-Man, his frame rate increases and his movements are smoother. Clever, isn't it? Clever. Cool, isn't it? Yeah, very cool. Um, another big one that I'm looking forward to, but in the same breath as me saying I'm looking forward to, I'm also very nervous for... Mm. Because it's part of the MCU, which is Ant Man, Quantumania, Ant Man and Wasp, Quantumania. Every Marvel film now is like, like a hold your breath for an hour and a half, and yeah. then be like, right. Only because it... of last year's antics. The whole, yeah. even I think Kevin Feige. My brother told me that Kevin Feige even came out and said that he made an error last year because he was prioritizing quantity over quality, mm. which is why all the CGI looks about twenty years out of date. I mean, Thor. When the Teletubby's son comes I still out. stick by this, right? Thor is the worst film. Thor Love and Fun is the worst film I've ever seen in the cinema. I could. Hands down. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It is pretty bad. I wouldn't say it's the worst I've seen at the fil- at the cinema. It's not the worst film I've ever seen, but it's my. I think it's my worst cinema experience ever because I was just sat there just like... It's because of the anticipation building up to such a... Uh, what what could have been such a really good film. It's also because he was hands down the best Marvel character yeah. for, across two films being... Ragnarok and Infinity War, like hands down the best oh, yeah. Thor character. And then we hit Love and Thunder and it was just just a huge disappointment. Yeah, it was really grim. So the anticipation, um, like this quantum mania is sort of setting up like for all the for all the MCU nerds out there, it's going to set up obviously the quantum quantum realm and, and sort of like 
all that sort of time travel -y stuff, potentially. I hope this is the resurgence of Marvel. I really hope so, because Kang, I mean, Jonathan Majors, who's playing Kang, he just, uh, when you see, he's, he's having like a... Um, He's having like a Dwayne the Rock Johnson moment, I think, because I, I, every time I see a trailer, it's just him. <laughs> Which everywhere. He's just everywhere, but I really like him. I think he was really cool in Loki. Yeah, he was. Um, and obviously, he's playing the same character, but as another variant. Yeah, I think. So, I think I'm. I'm excited. I'm optimistic. I'm not going to give up yet. But yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm not far off though. Yeah, it's a, it's a nerve wracking one. Is, any more films that sort of stand out to you this year, or? I mean, I've still not seen Avatar. Have you not known? No, so I guess that is a bit of a cheat. Yeah, it's question. a bit cheat, one, but I'll let you have it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. The new one's coming out next year as well. I know, yeah. Well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Looking forward to it ahead. Well, there's going to there's, there's gonna be a great year of film and TV, so probably lots to talk about, I'd imagine. Yeah. 100%. Well, thank you again for tuning into Out of the Box, the podcast. Yeah, thank you as always. We've got some really exciting guests coming up in the next few weeks. Um, really exciting topics and stuff. I'm actually really excited about our first guest which will be in i think two weeks today yeah it's, it's, it's exciting keep it on the wraps for now but keep an eye out follow us on these are videos are on youtube and the um audio is on obviously on spotify and apple music yeah. so thank you very much for listening and see you on the next one thank you very much